Today I want to talk about polling. There's something wrong with these polls when I look at them. I think that they're missing a lot of key details or they are, you know, designed to create apprehension in the electorate. So let's start off by looking at what ENCA and Mark Data have said the polling indicates. ANC 43.4, DA 18.6, MK 14.4. EFF 11.4, other 9%, 9.4%, IFP 3.1%. I think, I think that's wrong. I think that's wrong. There's two things that I think are wrong in this, in this data. Number one, Konto Wesizu at 14.4%. When EFF started, it came in at 6%. When COPE started, it came in at 7%. I don't think that MK is going to be able to pull 14%. In their first election, mm -mm. that's too high. Now, the reason why this could be showing up in the polling is because maybe they're polling people who are overestimating the ANC, or maybe they just want to scare the audience to think that, you know, Mkonto Wesizwe is going to be a real threat in this election, so go vote DA or something. So I think that's too high. I also think that the EFF number is too low. The EFF has grown. I'll talk more about why the EFF has grown, but the EFF number is too low. So I think that the, um, the this mark data is wrong. I'm going to give you my projections so that you can measure me um, with with the results when they come out. Then look at let's look at Brentest. Last year in uh, October of 2023, Brentest said that ANC 43%, DA 20%. EFF 18%, obviously there was no MK, IFP 5%, Action SA 4%, uh, Freedom Front Plus 2%, other parties 8%. In February, still without an MK sample, a ANC had dropped to 40, DA was at 20.5, EFF was at 19, then IFP 4.9, Action SA 4.3, and then Freedom Front Plus 2.1. Then something weird happens here. Something weird happens here. I, I'm gonna, also going to post this uh, just on the on the actual this is a side screen there. When they get to April, this is Ipsos. ANC forty point two percent, DA twenty one point nine. So the DA has gone up in their poll. <laughs> I think that's that's not likely. Then the EFF has gone down from nineteen point six to eleven point five. I don't think that's that's a real thing. Then MK gets 8.4. So what they've done is that they've said all of the EFF people that we were projecting at 19.4 are now going to go to MK, which now gets 8.4, and then uh, you know EFF drops to 11.5. I don't think that's real. That's the only party that has dropped in terms of percentages. Everybody else stays relatively the same. Now the premise here is that when MK party came in, all of the EFF voters moved to MK. I mean, not all of them, but 8.4% 8, 8 of the EFF voters moved to MK, but nobody moved from the ANC because ANC was at 40.5 in February and 40.2. Only 0.3% of ANC supporters moved, and then the rest of them went to EFF. That's a stretch. Come on, guys. That's a stretch. It is very unlikely that all of MK supporters are coming from EFF. In fact, my analysis is that most of the people who are supporting Jacob Zuma are actually coming from the ANC. They are ANC supporters who never supported the Ramaphosa faction. They are ANC supporters who felt that Jacob Zuma has been hard done by. They are ANC supporters who feel that uh, Sir Ramaphosa has not upheld conference resolutions. They are ANC supporters who feel that Sir Ramaphosa is too much of a capitalist and is privatizing everything. Those are the type of people who would most likely vote for Umkonto Wesizwe. Also, these are diehard ANC people who are still married to the brand of Umkonto Wesizwe. Freedom Fighters left and they have some resentment and animosity towards Jacob Zuma. I don't think that a lot of them are going to go back to Jacob Zuma. So even if there's some of them, the fact that the whole Ipsos poll moves 19.6% from EFF to 11.5% purely on the basis of MK Party, 
I don't think that's reasonable or rational. I don't think that's actually what's going to happen. Then the next poll that I want us to look at um, in terms of what they've been projecting, and this is um, Brent Hest. So Brent Hest had ANC at 39, then they had DA at 27, then they had MK Party at 13, EFF at 10%, IFP at 2, other at 5%. What is my big concern about this particular poll? DA, 27%. Come on. MK, 13%. That's too high. Again, when COPE came in, 7%. When EFF came in, 6%. How is it possible that Mkonto Wesizo Party will outperform COPE by a factor of 100% to get 14%, 13%? That's too high. That's too high, especially in this competitive environment. Remember in, in 2009 when COPE was launched, it was not a competitive election in the way that this one is. In this election, you have a lot of new players who are well-funded, who are competing at a high level. You have parties such as, Co as EFF, which have been in existence for 10 years. There's no place that I really see MK getting 13% um, of the vote, unless that is coming at the expense of the ANC, which is one of the weakest parties. So. The MK number, again, it's almost like these, these polls are speaking to each other, 14%, 13%, almost like there's a synchronized desire to project MK. Because look, look, ENCA, 14.4. Uh, Brent has 13. And then you've got, um, what's this other one that I looked at? Ipsos. MK is, is at 8.4. That's the one which is like saying not so high. But still, still, I mean, it's, it's, it's still too high if you ask me. But the other big number from the Berent test poll that I thought was a problem was the 27%. 27% for the DA in this election. Let's, let's do a qualitative analysis because I don't do um, this kind of uh, polling type of stuff. You need a lot of money to do polling and a lot of these entities are well-funded. But I do do qualitative analysis. I do observation. I do social listening. And I, I, I do understand the principles of leadership, just in general. So, number one, the DA lost one of their most significant and popular leaders, Musi Maimane. Then they lost Herman Mashaba. Then they lost um, Mbalintuli, Pumzile Van Dam. And then the, the floodgates just opened. They lost a lot of talent. And that created a perception that there is a black exodus or a black purge within the Democratic Alliance. That's number one. Then number two, John Steinhazen made a lot of mistakes, and Helen Ziller has made a lot of mistakes just in the, in the last five years, which have created resentment and, and negative sentiment towards the party, to be quite honest. Sure, they have someone like um, Mayor Pappas coming in, who is popular and well-liked, but does Mayor Pappas offset uh, all of the developments that have played out? They now have three different parties which are competing for similar electorates to what they have enjoyed a, a monopoly on to an extent. You have Build One South Africa, the party led by Musi Maimane. He is still polling, even in these polls, as one of the most popular leaders. And his party is called Build One South Africa with Musi Maimane. So we can't assume that there's no support that he's going to get there. Number two, then you've got uh, Action SA. Herman Mashaba showed in Gauteng in the 2021 elections that he's able to get numbers and get voters to vote for him. So that's already a, a, a factor. Then you've got Rise and Zanzi, which also has been uh, showing strong numbers. Then you've got Patriotic Alliance. Gaten McKenzie was able to do a rally at Athlon Stadium, capacity 35,000, and he filled up the stadium. So, and he's won some by-elections against the DA. So 27%, 27%. For the DA. So you mean to tell me that DA got 22% in the last election? And with all of these developments that have happened, not only are they going to outperform that election, they're going to get 27%, guys. Come on. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? One of the worst performing parties in the 2021 local government elections was the DA. They lost a significant amount of support. Many voters did not turn up because they don't actually like this shift to the right. They don't like some of this um, ultra right wing type of uh, rhetoric and some of even the things that they view to be racist uh, within the party and some of the leaders and some of the narratives have been very toxic towards gaining likability. Then the DA burned the flag. 27%. Come on. There's no 27% for the DA, guys. 
There's no 27% for the, for the DA. Then you've got this other, oh, Paul, okay, so before I move on. So Brentest is interesting because Brentest was founded by the Oppenheimers. Oppenheimer family, uh, that's their foundation. They're doing polls. And in their polls, <laughs> the Democratic Alliance is doing well. That's a conflict of interest that must be considered. That is there a possibility that either Brentest is calling databases that overrepresent the DA, or maybe there's a conflict of interest that must be accounted for here. Maybe the number is inflated. I don't know. I'm just pointing out, I don't think this number is right. Come back to me here on Thursday next week. We'll have a conversation, but I think I'm right. Then there's this other one by Social Research Foundation. Now, the Social Research Foundation is doing a daily poll type of thing, but they, they are also linked to the DA. And in these polls, they are saying ANC 44.3, DA 23%. MK 10.5%, EFF 10%. EFF is not going to fall, guys, and I'm going to explain why just now. But this polling is wrong. Other 7.2, IFP 4.9. The parties that are part of the multi charter coalition seem to be overrepresented here. This is on a 66% turnout. Then you go to a 60% turnout and say, okay, what do you, what do you have at a 60% turnout? They have ANC 46%, DA 23.7, almost 24. <laughs> Come on. DA growing in this environment. It's not going to happen. MK 8.6, EFF 8.1. Come on, guys. Other 9.1, IFP 4.2. It's not going to happen. And one of the things that has been showing me that these polls are relatively wrong is just the underrepresentation of the EFF. Now, why do I say the EFF is going to grow? I'm going to give you some qualitative analysis. Number one. The EFF focused from 2021 on member registrations, and they've registered over 2 million members. They've got 2 million members, signed up members. That's number one. Number two, the EFF has been dominating the university election space. They've been dominating it. Almost every university SRC in the country is um, run by the EFF. So they have got a large volunteer base of enthusiastic young people who are happy and willing to go anywhere and everywhere to campaign for the party. So that large volunteer army is often one of the biggest differentiators in an election campaign, especially with the thing that we call GOTV, getting out the vote. Then number three, the EFF has had a very solid leadership in terms of uh, a very clear line of command. Um, Julius Malema, we say not... Julius Malema, Floyd Shivambu, you go through their leadership list. You know, Mbuiseni is in another place. I don't know why I mentioned him in the top two. But you know the leadership structure of um, the EFF, and it's very clear. There have been some small factional issues every now and again, but by and large, the EFF is a very well-oiled and orchestrated machine, even up until this point. That is incontrovertible at this point. Their leadership of Julius Malema is well-recognized, well-respected across um, the, the, the continent even, right? So EFF is a controversial party. Many people don't like its ideologies. Many people don't support land reform, but many people do. And their message has been coherent from start up until now. Everyone knows what they stand for. Everyone knows what they oppose. And every now and again, yes, they do flip-flop on certain things and they'll say, no, we're not going to do this with Zuma. And then they go drink tea with Zuma, etc. Those are fair criticisms of the EFF. Many people are concerned about all of the allegations that have come from Daily Maverick and other places about corruption. But the support base of the EFF has been growing. They've shown that they have a strong support base in Wazulu Natal, and that's another thing that I wanted to talk about. The EFF went and did that, that, that rally at the Moses Mapita Stadium with a KZN crowd. They didn't bus people in from other provinces, and they spent the same type of strategic, strategic approach in every other province. So they've been able to show a strong footprint in every province without busing in people. That is something that is critical. So when the idea comes that the EFF is not going to do well, I think it comes from the fact that they've been running a relatively silent campaign. So typically the EFF will cause a lot of drama. You know, they'll go to cliques, there'll be a large march to the JSC, all kinds of things. They haven't done that in a while. And that's something that I think makes their campaign feel muted. But if you pay attention to where they are placing their billboards, their posters, if you pay attention to what their candidates and activists and volunteers are doing, you'll see that they are running a very data-driven campaign. They are very focused on dealing with that criticism that, you know, you don't get numbers on Twitter, you don't get numbers over here, you don't get numbers over there. And I think that's not showing up in the polling. 
because the pollsters are just calling a bunch of people and then they think that's accurate. They're not looking at the behavior of political operatives on the ground. The ground game is something that matters. And when I look at the ground game, the EFF is running a very sophisticated ground game. So when the projections say that the EFF is going to be like this one is saying at 8.1%, if there's a 60% turnout, that's preposterous, 11.4%. I think that's also too low. I think that the EFF is going to grow. Now, I'm going to give you my, pro my projections so that um, I also am on the wall in terms of having made some analysis around that. Okay? ANC, I'm putting them at 42%. EFF, I'm putting them as the number two party at 18%. DA, I'm putting at 15%. MK, I'm putting at 5%. The rest of the parties, I'm putting at 20%. So that gives us uh, our 100. Now, breaking down that 20%, what do I think is going to happen? I think you're going to have IFP at 4%, Freedom Front Plus at 4%, Action SA at 4%. Then I think you're going to have Patriotic Alliance 2%, Rising Zanzi 2%, Osa 2%, and then the rest, whatever is left over, they will get the remaining uh, percent. Let me see where I'm at. So 4, 8, 12. And then that takes me to 18. There's a remaining 2% that may go to ACDP, um, Good Party, and uh, ATM, which may get a full 1% from that particular list. But I don't think that they're going to cross over the 1% mark to a 2% mark. But those are my projections. Why do I say this? I think the ANC is struggling a lot because of the MK factor. I think without MK, they would have been at 47%. But because now there's an MK, they're not going to hit that number. I said the EFF is going to get 18 because of students, because of organization, because of provincial strength, because they've been running a strong game, ground game. I said the DA is going to um, shrink in size by 7% from where they were last time. Why? Because there are three different challenges coming out of that if its own party. Build One South Africa, Action SA, then there's Rise Mzansi not coming out of there, uh, but with some leaders coming out of there, such as Mahashule Ghana, but also a massive uh, perception problem with that perception that they're anti-black, wrong choice of messaging, aggravating voters by burning the flag, aggravating voters by Swat Kevar, so many things that they've done, unlikable, uncharismatic leader without a strong message and strong resonance on the ground, so they're not going to do well. MK, 5%, Jacob Zuma is very popular, very lovable in many constituencies, but starting a new party ain't easy, and we've seen before, 6% for um, EFF, 7% uh, for COPE, this is a harder political terrain, that's why I'm placing it at 5%. And the other parties are going to struggle with various things. IFP still has historical brand, historical legacy. They just got 20 million. They're going to do fine. Freedom Front Plus still has its ultra right wing uh, constituency. Action SA, Herman Mashaba has been running a strong game, strong campaign. He's going to get 4%. Patriotic Alliance, Gaten McKenzie has figured out that colored constituency, particularly in the Western Cape, 2%. Rise Mzansi, they've interested a lot of people, colorful, vibrant, people are excited, 2%. Build One South Africa, Musi Maimani's brand is still very strong. People like him. They like that ad that he just posted. He's still a popular guy, no corruption, 2%. And the rest, um, the remaining um, 2%, maybe 1% for ATM, because Rio Zungula has also been doing a good job. But outside of that, I don't think that it's going to be any different. What do you think, though? What do you think? Do you think these polls are right? Have you seen these polls? <laughs> Have you seen some of this? 27% for the Democratic Alliance. Come on, guys. Come on. What are we doing here? Till the next one. Peace. Oh, yeah. Like, subscribe, comment. Do the things. Do the things. Let's grow the channel. Let's grow this platform. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, that's Caesar's thing. Till the next one. <laughs> Shout out, Caesar. Follow Caesar. I'm going to keep that in. I'm not going to edit it.